Hey y'all, I'm Rare Sam, and I play Sam. Hey, my name's Derek McCabe, and I play Charles Wallace. Hi, I'm Levi Miller, and yeah, I'm from Australia, <laughs> and I play Calvin. So there is filming going on right now, but we're not to be in a scene for a while. So we were asked to come explain one of the biggest rumors in Beatles history. The death rumors of Paul McCartney. That's right, Derek. We've been asked to look through all the clues and make sense of them all for you. Yep. There have been rumors that he died in 1966, the same year as the Beatles ended the touring years. Many believe that's the reason why, because Paul died in a car crash. So let's go straight to the clues. Okay, we often find clues, winks, and nudges on the album covers and in the songs. So let's take a look at the first album since the touring years ended. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. That cover looks innocent to me. I, it looks innocent now. But check out the four Beatles. The three are facing Paul's direction with Paul facing front, dead on. Yeah, and also notice that Paul is the only Beatle that isn't holding a brass instrument. Well, well, not not the only one. And George Harrison is holding a flute, as you can see. Oh yeah, right. But still, Paul is holding a cor anglais, the only black instrument we see the Beatles holding. Yeah, yeah, and also, notice up here, this guy is holding a hand above Paul's head. We've got what looks like a grave and a left hand and a guitar topiary made of yellow flowers and also if you look really closely the flowers spell out paul question mark never noticed that but i but what i do notice is up here this doll if we look super closely at the doll we notice that right next to her is a driver's glove covered in blood and also a little toy car that's filled with blood. And a car crash is how Paul would have died. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's, we get another clue if we hold a mirror up to the bass drum. So if we hold the mirror up to the bass drum, it, it gives us a date on the left side. We get one and the word one which is the 11th month or November. We also get the Roman numeral for nine, which is the day, November 9th. And then the message, he died, with an arrow pointing directly up at Paul. So Paul would have died on November 9th, 1966. Looks that way. And another clue in that album is... Wait, I know what you're going to say. When we open the record, we get a picture of the Fab Four. But Paul has a patch on his shoulder that supposedly says OPD. And if I remember correctly, that stands for officially pronounced dead. That's right, Levi. You see, officially pronounced dead or OPD is, is the UK version of the US phrase dead on arrival or DOA. Now, when we look at the back of the album, we see that Paul is the only Beatle with his back towards us, suggesting the fact that he's hiding something. Creepy. And also, down here, look at where George Harrison is pointing. It's a lyric from She's Leaving Home, Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. And coincidentally, November 9th fell on a Wednesday in 1966. And there are more clues in the songs on the Sgt. Pepper album. Now, now take this one for example. It's the beginning of With a Little Help from My Friends. As it, as it transitions into the song, you can hear the Beatles sing Billy Shears. <laughs> Billy, Billy Shears was rumored to be the name of Paul's replacement. By people who believe the rumor, but don't know Billy Shears' name, just call nowadays Paul 
fall, you know, fall with an F. Like they're calling him fake Paul. Oh. And now that you mentioned the rumor that he would have died in a car crash, I'm starting to think that the song A Day in the Life kind of alludes to Paul's death. Mm, yeah, you know, now that you mention it, A Day in the Life does have lyrics that ring a bell. You see, when you read them, um, I'm reading them off of the back of the album here because they do it. Um, let's see. Uh, he blew his mind out in a car. He didn't notice that the lights had changed. A crowd of people stood and stared. They'd seen his face before. Nobody was really sure if he was from the house of Paul? Yeah, a lot of people think that the lyrics are nobody was really sure if he was from the house of Paul, but those are people with bad hearing. <laughs> we'll get back to that later. But that's just the Sgt. Pepper album. We also see clues on the cover of the Magical Mystery Tour. And on this cover, Paul is the only Beatle dressed in black, standing in a crucifixial pose. And if we turn the record upside down, the stars that form the word Beatles, if we connect the stars together, a phone number is revealed. We get a phone number. What this phone number is actually depends on the way you look at it. It could be a dozen different numbers. And it's believed that if you called this phone number on a Wednesday at 5 a.m., it doesn't really matter when it is. It, it just has to be at 5 a.m. or p.m. It doesn't matter. But if you call the number on a Wednesday at 5, you could get at some disturbing messages from the other side or actually talk to the real Billy Shears. Mm. And when we open the Magical Mystery Tour record, not only do we get the record, but we also get this 23-page booklet that is full of clues. Let's begin with more hands above Paul's head. See, there's, there's Paul right here, and this guy's hand is above his head. And then and we see that again in cartoon form on page 15. And we see it again on page 18 right here. And finally, on page 24. Where's Paul? Here he is. Um, not just his own hands, but also this guy. And on page three, we get a picture of Paul and Victor Spinetti um, in an army office. And Paul is sitting at a desk. And on the desk is a sign that says, I was. And also on this old page, Paul is the only member of the band without shoes. And his shoes are right here above page 13. And his shoes have blood stains on them. <laughs> Thought to be from the car crash. And finally, the most obvious clue is here on page 23. Paul is the only beetle wearing a black corsage, another symbol of death. Now, as the song I Am the Walrus fades out, we hear lines from the Shakespeare play King Lear. And the scene that's playing is the death of the character Oswald. So if we play the record, we can only barely hear the lines. So we're gonna do some role playing to say them. Sam, you be Edgar and I'll be Oswald. Is there a part for me? Hmm. Levi can be Gloucester. Okay, I'll start. Oswald's lines. Slave, thou hast slain me. Villain, take my purse. If thou wilt thrive, bury my body, and give the letters which thou find'st about me to Edmund Earl of Gloucester. Seek him out upon the British party, 
<laughs> oh, untimely death. I knew thee well, a serviceable villain. As duty is to the vice of thy mistress, as badness would desire. What is he did? Sit you down, father, rest you. And scene. That's all we hear from that scene at the end of I Am the Walrus. And people who don't study Shakespeare enough think that they're memorizing what happened during Paul's death. Uh-huh. But if we play the end of I Am the Walrus in reverse over the scene, we could hear the Mike Sam singers, which is really just a 16 singer choir, chanting, Paul is dead, ha ha. See, here's a little bit of it. <laughs> Saying Paul is dead over a Shakespeare scene? That's creepy. Yeah, but that's not as creepy as what's gonna come next. You see, in the end of Strawberry Fields Forever, you hear John Lennon seemingly say, I buried Paul. Yeah, that is even creepier. Now let's move on to the White Album. And while the White Album doesn't have any visual clues, because I guess, you know, it's, it's white. <laughs> when we open the record, we are greeted by a poster and hidden in this poster, we find the only known photo of Billy Shears from before he got plastic surgery to look like Paul. Now, all the other clues in that album are in the songs. So, the first one being in the song Glass Onion. Now let me see. The lyrics that indicate Paul's death are, I told you about the walrus and me, man. We were quite close as can be, man. Well, here's another clue for you all. The walrus was Paul. And that suggests the fact that John was up to something. What? <laughs> so in the last five seconds of the song, I'm so tired, we hear some gibberish. <laughs> However, if you play it in reverse, it sounds like John is saying, Paul is dead, man. Miss him, miss him, miss him. Here it is. Did you hear it? And our final clue on the White Album is if you play the beginning of the song Revolution 9 in reverse, you hear John say what people say is the most convincing piece of evidence. Turn me on, dead man. Here it is. Can you hear it? The Yellow Submarine album has almost little to no clues, except it does have one little clue, and that is yet another hand above Paul's head. And our final album with clues in it is Abbey Road, which is in itself an entire shard of evidence. So looking at the cover of Abbey Road, we see the Beatles walking across the road, and behind them is what seems to be a cemetery. And, and the Beatles are in line. Let's see. John is in front, and he's entirely dressed in white, looking cross-like with the long hair. So he resembles a preacher. Right. And Ringo Starr follows, and, and he's in black, resembling an undertaker. Mm-hmm. Paul follows, and he's out of step with the other three. And he's holding a cigarette in his right hand. Paul is supposed to be left-handed. What? And he's also barefoot, suggesting a corpse. And then George Harrison is the last one. And he's entirely in jeans, resembling a grave digger. And right behind George is a white car with a license plate that says 28 if suggesting that Paul would have been 28 if he were still alive. Now, on the back of Abbey Road, to the left of the word Beatles, you have a series of dots that look like they form the number three, which forms the sentence three Beatles. <laughs>